Hey everybody, it's Kathy Boyle, president of Chapin Hill Advisors. Today we're interviewing another member of our Circle of Influence. We've designed our Circle of Influence to showcase members in a wide variety of fields and services. When I work with a business owner, I often introduce a wide variety of other experts from coaches to employment people, HR, pension experts, etc. Finding the right expert, especially in a field where I don't have someone, is really hard. And finding the right expert for you is extremely expensive if you make a mistake. So let's get it right from the get-go. I don't know anybody who has time or money to waste. So Ryan England, founder and president of The Core Matters. So Ryan, you spend your time in helping people get the right teams in place. So let's just talk first about the cost of making a mistake in a hire. Absolutely. So on the low end for a small business, you're looking at five to $7,000 just in replacing an admin, for example. But if you've got someone in your C-suite on your leadership team, it can be anywhere from 13 to 20 times their annual salary if you make a mistake. So $100,000 costs you $1.3 to $2 million. Absolutely. And what's the failure rate in general for hires? Is there a broad number? So Typically, we use around one third, about 33% of hires, just, but it really depends on the industry and the position you're looking for and really how much effort you put into it on the beginning. Got it. So let's talk about that effort in the beginning. What is it that you do and offer and how can you help an entrepreneur? Absolutely. So I take a different approach to recruiting and I actually think of recruiting like a marketing activity. And when you think of marketing, you think of putting your best foot forward, you think about the right messaging, you think about what is it that I can do to attract the right person to me. And so that's the philosophy we use in actually going out and helping somebody find the right person. And I use a lot of uh, a dating analogies in this because when you're looking for someone, you're looking for the right person, you wanna look for someone that you can have a long-term relationship with, someone that is gonna value the things you're gonna value. And so when you put that information out there, you say, this is what I'm looking for, and they need to value these things, you're going to make a lot better uh, decision up front on who to hire. Got it. And so what are some of the classic mistakes that entrepreneurs make? Waiting too long to open up a job. Uh, too often entrepreneurs, they, they wake up in the morning and a key person quits, or they just found out they got that new job and now they need to hire up. And they put out the job descriptions and they take anybody that walks through the door. They wait too long because our good screening process is gonna take weeks, if not months, depending on the position. So I always tell my clients, you always want to be recruiting, even if you're not hiring today, because you never know when that A player might show up and you go, wow, I've got a B or C player that needs to go away anyways. And you just start filling your team with the right people. Got it. One of your phrases that I love is uh, hire slow, fire quick. Um, so that's very hard for us entrepreneurs to like fill the, the gap, want to just plug the hole and we're not IBM. We don't have another assistant that we can just move over from desk B to desk A to fill in the gap. So, you know, that becomes, I think, one of the major issues for a business, even a, a pretty big business. Again, we just don't have the duplication of capacity. So um, I think certainly we all hire too fast, but let's talk about firing fast. That's very challenging. Absolutely. I see way too many entrepreneurs, they wait too long to let somebody go. And I've never met someone that said, gee, I waited the right amount of time. They all said, I wish I would have done that months or years ago. And so, but there's this, this fear that I think, and it's an irrational fear for many entrepreneurs that if they get rid of somebody who's not performing, they won't have that extra set of hands to help them. And I think the biggest problem is that set of hands is causing a lot of issues that the rest of your team is having to pick up the slack for. And so right. often we find that when we get rid of a bad apple and we let that person go, productivity and morale and everything goes up. And that's why most entrepreneurs don't regret that. Right. I think one of the problems is that the team doesn't want to tell you. They're often fearful of their own job delivering bad news to the CEO. And sometimes we're blind. We don't want to hear it or we really want to give this person another choice. So let's talk about duplicating ourselves. Absolutely. So I think one of the things that a lot of entrepreneurs get, uh, they get hung up on is they hire people they like, not people they need. And so a lot of times, I may need to duplicate myself because 
I need more help in the admin world. Like I need a lot of administrative help, but administrative work may not be what I'm best suited for. It may not be my strong suit. It may not be something I enjoy. So when I go hire an admin, I hire an admin like me. <laughs> and then I end up being disappointed because administrative work isn't their strong suit, but they're like me. So I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, it's recognizing what is the work that you need done, but also what is the, the work that you don't like and give that up first. Got it. So let's talk about your process. How do you help people do this? Absolutely. So I have a seven stage process that I take clients through, starting from really getting clear on who they are as an organization, what their culture looks like, how they hold people accountable, uh, what behaviors are acceptable, all the way through how do you automate that process? You had mentioned that as an entrepreneur, it's really hard to come up with the extra time to fill the bench and have backups and all that there are systems out there that can automate that process and actually make hiring that much easier. But now that you've made the good hire, you have to onboard them correctly and then engage them in an ongoing basis. Because if you put all this effort into finding the right person, the last thing you want to do is set them up for failure or chase them away. Right. And I think that's another place where we're so busy. We want to plug and play. So just here, you're great. Go. Right. Absolutely. I've made that mistake myself. Another thing you've told me before is that um, you have told clients, and it's proven true so far, that a key member of their team will quit within the first six weeks of working with you. Why is that? So when there's people in leadership capacity for these smaller businesses, they either came into the business because they were a friend or family member or a friend of a friend or something like that, and they, they had the skill set but they didn't have the behaviors and the values that the entrepreneur really needed. And so what happens, one of the first things we do is we get really clear on what are the values of the organization? What are the acceptable behaviors? And inevitably there's someone on the leadership team that just, once we start digging into that and they start hearing it from the owner's mouth, they're like, yeah, I'm not the person that should be sitting in this seat because I don't agree with those values. I don't want the accountability. I don't want to behave that way. And so that's why they end up leaving. So they'll take themselves out rather than wait for negative reviews and ultimately getting fired. Yep. Wonderful. So what's your engagement like? Do you work with people for six weeks? Is it six months? Is it a year, multiple years? What's what, you know, I realize so there's, there's variations, but typically. Yeah, absolutely. So there's two main ways I work with clients. One of them is in a 12 week coaching program that I've put together. So instead of me just training them, I'm actually coaching them and teaching them how to fish, if you will. Um, how to find the right people, how to build these systems. And I support them every step of the way in that 12 weeks. And we put together a really solid recruiting plan for them. And we also help them automate the process. For wow, larger clients that are looking for something a little bit more custom for them, I do consulting engagements, but those are typically 12 to 24 months. And there's just a lot more involved, a lot more in depth. But those are usually for the bigger clients. Got it. And what's a bigger client? Number of employees roughly or revenue? Yeah, over 150 employees. Got it. So. Okay. And are there any industries that you specialize in or are you pretty broad? Uh, so my focus is always on frontline employees. So it's always on skilled labor or those positions that you're filling rapidly as the company grows. Think call centers and uh, those inside sales reps. Uh, but my focus, my past has been in the blue collar space working with construction companies, home service companies, really have a passion for them. And so helping them find technicians, craft workers, those kinds of things. Wonderful, that's great. How would I find you? Uh, so website is the easiest thing, thecorematters.com. But if you Google Ryan England, I put a lot of effort into making sure I dominate the first few pages of Google. So uh, I'm pretty easy to find. I'm on LinkedIn, all the social media platforms, but thecorematters.com is the easiest. Terrific. We're delighted to have you in our circle of influence. Thank you.